known him for a long time. Uh, give me your read on if this season is different for Drew Brees than any of the others. You know, I think the hardest thing when you get that age is not the physical part of the game. It's the mental grind that you go through. You don't realize that that position, and Drew's either all in or he's going to be out. It's not going to be a half step in effort. Uh, you know, you put yourself through a, a lot of mental grind to play an NFL season and to prepare for it. And I think that's that's the thing that wears down quarterbacks. I talked to Peyton about this. I've talked to Bobby, Eli Manning, and, and they've all sort of said the same thing. As you get later in your career, even Brett Favre visited us with us a couple years ago uh, in Mississippi, and his deal was that physically to play, I can still play, uh, but I, I, do I want to go in all those meetings? Do I want to spend all that time uh, studying film? Uh, do I want to do all that mental prep work that you got to do? He said, you know, it, it got to the point where, you know, I didn't want to do it anymore. And he said, that's the thing that sort of knocks you down uh, more than the physical part of playing and what you got to go through daily, uh, you know. And the one thing with Drew, uh, Taysom Hill told me this. Uh, we did a function last summer, and he's like, he's like an Olympic athlete. And he says, you know, a lot of times – an Olympic athlete, right after he will maybe win a medal or, or go to the Olympics, man, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to prepare myself, you know, four years from now. And he said, you know what, most of them come back. You know, most of them, you know, you know that, that passes fast and their deal is, you know what, I'm ready to get back in it. Uh, I want to do it. I would be surprised if Drew didn't play another season. I just think you look at his enthusiasm for the game. I think you look at certain elements that this – can he throw the football as far as he once could? No. I mean, come on, that's obvious. But you just look at what he's pieced together. I think the second highest percentage completion rate uh, during his career, uh, and he almost best his best mark ever, which was an NFL record. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was the December player of the month in the NFL. Uh, that You know, all that would tell me that he, he's going to come back. But I do think a lot of times you have some family uh, that's around you to say, hey, listen, let's take a little bit of time and think about it and talk it over. And uh, I do think you, at that age, you have to if you're a professional athlete uh, because you're away from it. You know, you, your wife has a lot of responsibilities, uh, and it's difficult. Uh, um, and some of us in different professions, you know, we, we have to rely on our wives to do a lot of different things that, you know, if we had a regular job, we could handle. But it's, it's not that way. And so for Drew, uh, I think he's got to go through that process. But I think uh, by now, if he would have wanted to retire, I think he would have. I think, I think he'd have said it. I, I think he'd have said, you know what, guys? Hey, listen, it's been a great ride, a great run. Thank you for everything, but I think it's time for me to walk away. Uh, I think he, he plays another year. I tend to agree, Mike. So where does that leave the Saints with the other two quarterbacks? Because Sean Payton, I'm sure you saw it today as well in first take, said he doesn't think it's feasible to keep all three next year. <laughs> me so, neither. So, right. So so what what do they do? Well, they're going to keep Taysom uh, because he's already explained that he his belief, now I haven't heard a lot of them, uh, anybody else mention it, but uh, that he thinks Taysom is the starting quarterback uh, to replace Drew. Uh, we've all seen Taysom in practice and in games, and he's improved as a passer, and he'll make three or four really good throws, and then uh, he's got a couple of them he sails or hits the turf, and you've got to be consistent, more consistent throwing the football. He is a tremendous football player. I would love him on my football team. Because he can do so many things to help you win. That's all I'm worried about. I'm worried about winning. Uh, and he can help me win games. If it's on special teams, this is a, as a runner, as a receiver in the slot. And he, uh, I think I, we did this on a Wednesday, and I think I told you this on the Thursday. One of the things he told me was, you know, I'm going to play more wide receiver this year. And I said this on this show. Uh, the day after he told me that, I'm going to play a lot more receiver this year. And he did. Uh, and But they were already kind of weaning him into that. So I think Taysom returns on a one-year deal, and then they'll take it from there. And I think Teddy's going to get a better financial deal somewhere else 
where he can be a starter. He's not going to wait around forever. And so I, I think he takes it somewhere else. So I, I, you know, I've been saying it, and I'm glad Coach agreed. Uh, I want to go one deeper on, on Taysom Hill here, Mike. Do you think – is he a future starting quarterback? You, look, Mike, you've said for years here, the heir apparent to Drew Brees is not on the roster. You've said it for years. But do you think Taysom Hill can or will be a starting quarterback in the NFL, New Orleans or elsewhere? No, I think okay. Taysom's, a guy, Taysom's a guy that is unique. He's got a unique position in this league, uh, undefined other than football player. He's undefined. That's not a position. But he can do so many things to help you win. And, uh, you know, if I were running an organization, i got to do what I can to keep him here because he helps me win games. Yeah. As a starting quarterback, we have seen that Taysom has made some strides, but I've always felt this way. If you're not a super accurate quarterback to begin with, you ain't going to turn out that way. <laughs> you know, come on, you are who you are uh, as a player. And he is a bit erratic throwing the football, and that's going to continue to work. And, again, if you at practice and you watch him, he makes four or five, six really good plays. And then two or three plays, it's way off the mark. With Drew, the ball barely hits the turf the entire time. And, you know, we sort of make a big thing out of it, I guess, that if you'll make a couple of bad passes or you'll throw an interception, oh, he threw two interceptions in that practice session. You know, it's a big thing. Uh, the next guy is not going to look like Drew Brees. He's not going to play like Drew Brees. It's going to be different because of what you've got coming out of the college ranks today. And not, and not everybody. There's only one team that's going to get Joe Burrow. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be the Saints. So you, you can see where this is sort of moving here. And I think Sean – is sort of moving in that direction, understanding the next guy is not going to be like Drew. He's going to be different, and so you're going to have to redefine what you do best, and it's always a process of piecing together what's best for your talent. It's not necessarily about your scheme, your system. Um, doesn't Coach O say it all the time? It's a player-driven you know, organization. Mm-hmm. And it, it's going to be like that with the Saints. It's going to be player-driven. Whatever that guy does best at quarterback, that's what Sean's going to build around. But I just don't see Taysom being able to throw the football in a 16-game time frame consistently enough to be that guy. I, I don't see it. I haven't seen it in practice. I've seen some progress, certainly in preseason. But, man, all I can tell you is preseason is the biggest mirage in the world. Mike, one more in, in this realm. There's a lot of chatter about Jordan Love. And I know you've talked a ton about Peyton, his affinity for Patrick Mahomes a few years back. Do you feel like if Love is on the board at 24, the Saints take him? I think you would have to at least consider it. I don't know that he'll be there at 24. Ooh. I do think that the three elements every year that's consistent is that what moves up the charts. A big offensive lineman. Pass defensive rushers. lineman, yep. bang, quarterback. quarterback. We, we see it every year. Uh, at this time, a few years back, uh, people gave me a lot of flack because I talked about Patrick Mahomes, his possible first-round pick. You know, uh, Kuyper or McShay didn't have him the first two rounds. And look, where, look what he's done. And, and listen, you're all going to make mistakes now in, in evaluations. We're all going to make them. But look at look what happened with Patrick and what he's been able to do. And one of the funniest stories uh, we have in, in covering the Manning camp, Patrick Mahomes came to the Manning camp right before his final season at Texas Tech. They have about 28, 29 counselors in a room sitting down, waiting to get interviewed. Patrick Mahomes did not get one interview for 40 <laughs> minutes. Who else was in the room that year, Mike? Oh, my goodness. I mean, they had some real good ones, but here was the best part. Uh, Chris Carter, and, and he works for HTV. I turned him around. I said, we're going to interview that guy right there. And he's like, and who's, that's the guy that LSU beat the, the stew out of? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, I, I've seen him throw. I said, let's go interview. And he was the nicest guy 
in the world, answered every question, was very good about, man, I'm here to learn how the Mannings do it, their work ethic, their attention to detail, the focus, everything. And he sat there, and we finished. Actually, we took a picture uh, together, and he took his cell phone, and he walked out. There was nobody else around him. So here it is now. Mm. We got a room full of reporters, I would say 50 to 60, maybe a little bit more. He got one interview. So, you know, it goes to sh- times you're going to miss on, on those type of guys. Uh, but he he's the kind of poster child for what can happen. Uh, for someone at this stage, when he came out, I think a lot of people felt he wasn't a first-round pick. Uh, Jordan Love is immensely gifted, <laughs> immensely. Uh, I, I took a picture because I saw him throwing, and in the backdrop are Peyton and Eli watching him. And, that, and I'll send it to you. Okay. He was one of these guys that, I think everybody wanted to see him throw it, and it was like, whoa. Uh, and, again, I've, I've made the comment to you, unless you got coin on a game or you're a Utah State alumni, you ain't staying up to 11 o'clock at night to watch him <laughs> play football. And he was one of those guys you stayed up to watch. He's highly erratic, though, as a passer, and you can see it. He's got some footwork issues uh, that uh, he'll sail some throws, He'll make four or five, eight throws that you go, wow. And then he'll throw a ball in coverage where there's three defenders and one receiver, and that receiver ain't got a shot. So he's, he's got some um, – it's going to take a good Sander Carpenter to, to get him mm-hmm. in spots. So he would be a guy I think you'd probably have to redshirt a year almost. Uh, I don't, he's not ready for prime time yet. Uh, as a passer, but he's got all the physical skills you're looking for. He's smart. He understands this game very, very well. He's an X and O guy that he can get on that board and tell you where this is supposed to be. And if you've got this type of rush, where are you supposed to go with it? That he's impressive one-on-one. And so what that tells me, and, and I just had probably three and a half to four minutes with him to talk. And he came across as a guy that, you said, man, that guy can potentially be a star one day uh, because he's that good of a passer, and it's so natural to him to throw the football, and it's with ease, and he's got some movement skills. Man, he can, he can get up there. Now, their pace, uh, when, you, when we watch Utah State play LSU, when they got, and LSU just skunked them uh, in that game, but the pace was real fast, real quick, almost similar to what we saw LSU do this year. The only problem is he didn't have those receivers in that offensive line uh, protecting him. But he, um, he's a guy that I sort of believe will end up being a first-round pick and most likely will be off the board by the time the Saints pick. But if he's there, you've got to seriously consider it because of his talent and his growth potential uh, as a, not only as a quarterback but also as a leader. You can see he's got that it factor to him. 